Hi, we are here in the Tiergarten in Berlin and uh, we are going to do a review of the SIRP variable ND filter. This is a non-stop uh, filter. This is the 82 millimeter version. We've been using this uh, filter for the past few weeks and what we are going to do first is try and look at uh, the general design and build quality of this filter. So let's look at the SIRP variable ND filters. On this side we have the 67 millimeter version and on this side we have the 82 millimeter version. We have already taken out of the box, the cardboard box that they came in, this uh, leather casing. It's a very nice uh, leather-like, probably not real leather case. It's good to protect against scratches or small accidental falls, but we will not throw away this uh, cardboard box. It's uh, good to protect uh, overall against uh, all sorts of uh, things that can happen to your uh, ND filter. Now, if we look inside, let's open this, this is a larger 82 millimeter. we have this uh, cleaning fabric, which is always good, and the filter itself. So this is what you get inside this uh, casing, the leather-like casing. If we open the cardboard box, let's start with the 82 millimeter. we have two step-up rings, the 82 to 77 millimeter and the 82 to 72 millimeter step-up rings. And on the 67 millimeter and the filter cardboard box we get two step up rings as well we have 67 to 58 and 67 to 52 millimeter in case you have 62 millimeter lens uh, you will probably need to buy a step up ring uh, to accommodate it so this is everything that comes in the box now let's look at the, the ND filter itself this is the 82 millimeter variable ND filter from SIRP. Like all other ND filters, it is comprised of two parts, a fixed glass element and one which can, uh, you can rotate in order to increase or decrease the amount of light which passes through the filter. The implementation of SIRP seems to be good and the general build quality is pretty high. And as you can see, this is manufactured in Japan. Now the markings on the side indicate how many stops of light you are blo currently blocking. We shall talk about this feature later on in this video, but uh, the markings themselves are the best that we have ever seen uh, and are very clear, although we have to say that we would still love to see general, uh, basically numbers instead of lines. Most companies use either lines or dot for some reason, and it's not very easy to read. Now let's take a look at the step up, uh, step up uh, ring. We actually don't really like these rings. They tend to stuck, uh, to get stuck, and uh, if you put them incorrectly, and if it's uh, too cold or too warm, uh, it's also an issue because uh, the metal contracts uh, in some of these uh, step up rings. Now the syrup one seems to be actually pretty decent, and we didn't have any issues with them. Just make sure that you don't tighten the ring to the uh, filter itself too strongly, otherwise you might have problem removing the filter from the step-up ring. At the end of the day, we would say that even if we don't uh, consider the relatively inexpensive nature of these filters, the general build quality is definitely good. But now let's take a look at how these filters actually perform. We shall start with the sharpness, and the idea here is very simple. We wanted to see if the filter reduces the sharpness of the lens in any way. What you can see now is a picture of a small box shot with our Nikon 50mm f1.8 manual focus lens. And now let's compare it to the same image shot with the same lens plus the SIRP ND filter. What you will be able to see in a second is what, ha what will happen when we will change the ND filter from one stop way up to 8.5 stops, where you won't basically be able to see anything anymore. Now, at any rate, from what we can see, and uh, we also took some stills, which you can uh, check out in the full written review of the, the syrup and the filter, is that we didn't really notice any impact on the sharpness when using the filter, which is obviously a good thing. We now move to our second test and here we are going to look at colors. On the one side we have our 50mm lens without the filter and on the other we have the exact same lens with the filter. There are some obvious differences because there is more light getting into the lens when the ND filter was not used. 
It might also be the position of the sun, however, in terms of colors, we didn't notice any impact. We also tried to change the level of the ND filter, but as far as we can tell, when you can see anything, the colors were not affected. Our third test was trying to look at vignetting when using the ND filter. We started at one stop when you can see some darkening of the corners, but this isn't too bad. Then we moved up to about four stops and it's still pretty much acceptable. However, when we move to around six stops, you start noticing it much more. And of course, when going to higher NDs, it's quite noticeable. We also wanted to look at what is known as the X factor, at least this is the way we call it. This is a pattern which is common on variable ND filters. It appears when using the filter close to the limit of the filter's light cutting capability, in this case around 8.5 stops, but we will talk about this more in a second. You can see it now on the screen and as far as we know this isn't a specific issue with the SERP filter, it's just how these variable ND filters work and you should be aware of this limitation and be careful not to reach it when you're shooting. Before we go to the conclusion, we wanted to note something strange that we discovered about the filter. Syrup rate this filter at 8.5 stops, which from our testing is more or less the case. However, we expected the 8.5 stops to be evenly spread across meaning that for each marked stop on the filter, the amount of light reaching the sensor will be cut in half. Strangely, this hasn't been the case for us. We ran this test many times in different lighting conditions on both the 67 and 82 SIRP ND filters and got the same results, which you can now see on the screen in the form of a table. On the left, we have the actual markings on the filter. We started without the filter and then moved to one stop, one line on the filter, two stops, two lines, and so on. On the middle row, you can see the shutter speed that we got for the test image, which gave, uh, which gave us the correct exposure. In this case, we used the Nikon D7100, a Sigma 10 to 20 mm lens at f8, and ISO 100. Finally, on the right, you can see what the shutter speed should have been if it actually cut down the light by one stop each time. As you can see, we started with no filter at two hundredths of a second and moving to one stop with the filter, we already see a small, pretty negligible difference. Moving to, stu to two stops, nothing changed and only with three stops do we see a decrease to about 60, uh, one to 60 of a second, which continues to four stops. At five stops, we see another decrease, but uh, one which is actually just a hair over two stops. At six stops, we see something closer to three stops of actual light cut down, and at seven stops, it is closer to four stops of la actual light cut down. The big change comes at eight stops with a sharp decrease in actual light equal to between five to six stops and at 8.5 stops, the maximum for the filter, we see a huge, huge drop to 2.5 seconds, which is close to a real 8.5 stops. However, in most cases, the filter isn't usable at 8.5 stops, and you will get the X mark that uh, we talked about earlier. The maximum usable stops for this filter is probably close, uh, closer to 8.2 in our case, uh, about half a second of exposure, which gives an effective, usable 5.5 stops of light reduction, a far cry from the 8.5 claimed by SIRP. So let's try and conclude this review. The SIRP variable ND filters are very well made. They come in a great kit, including a soft case, a hard cardboard box, and two step-up rings. At $140 for the 67mm and $190 for the 82mm, they are competitively priced against some of the best performing variable ND filters on the market, like the Stingray and the BMW, which cost about twice as much or more. As for performance, the color seems accurate, sharpness looks great, and we didn't see any loss of details. There is some vignetting, especially over 7 stops, but this is probably to be expected. The only real downside that we found was that uh, the light cut down isn't linear, 
and you will probably be getting it at most under six stops of usable light, light cut down and surely nowhere near the 8.5 stops like syrup claims. If you're a videographer and you can live with that, then the syrup variable ND filter can definitely be a very good investment for you. If you're shooting stills, you might still enjoy the filter, although for long exposures during the day, you will need uh, to look for a much stronger non-variable ND filter. So this is everything that we have to say about the Syrup ND filter. Now, during this uh, very long time that we had this uh, product for review, we received all these products and actually a few others as well. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of interesting reviews in the very near future on LensVid where you can find uh, the full review of the Syrup ND filter as well. Of course, as always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.